So if you find this sleep story helpful or interesting, then give it a thumbs up, leave any comments that you've got below. And if you aren't already, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you can receive notifications of when future sleep stories go live. I have dozens and dozens of stories already on my channel that you can go and search. I also release new stories every single week. So I hope you enjoy this story. Just take a moment to relax yourself down and close your eyes. And with your eyes closed, you can just listen along to me telling this story in the background. And as you listen along to this story in the background, I don't know whether you'll drift sleep to the sound of my voice or drift off to sleep to the spaces between my words. And as you begin to drift asleep, so I'll tell this story in the background. And it's a story about a young girl who's walking out into a fairground. She's visiting a fair that's down by a pier and she walks onto that pier and can hear that fairground music, see the lights of the fairground. In the background she can hear the sounds of the waves crashing on the shore and the sun's beginning to set. And as the sun sets, so she notices that the lights really stand out. And sometimes they seem to streak on the different rides that spin and move. And she can hear that fairground music, different music from different rides. And as she walks along the pier to the fairground, she can glimpse the sea below through the slats in the pier. And she can hear the sound of her footsteps as she walks along and the sounds of other people milling around playing different fairground rides and games. And she's heading to one specific ride. A ride she goes on every time this fair's in town. And it's an old fashioned merry-go-round. And as she walks towards that ride, so she notices that there's no one else on the ride. It's going around, the horses are going up and down, the music's playing, lights are flashing, different colours. The operator is operating that ride, and yet no one's riding it. And she goes over to where the queue should be, and waits for the ride to stop. And as she gets let on, she asks why no one's riding it. And the operator explains that she's the only person really who ever turns up and rides this ride. That people want all the computer games inside. People want the games where you can win something. People want to ram into each other on bumper cars. They want to go on roller coasters. No one wants to go on a merry-go-round anymore. And she walks around that merry-go-round to find her favourite horse. The one she sits on every year. 
and she climbs onto that oar, holds on to the metal bar, and the ride begins, and moves up and down, and the music plays, and she watches as the world goes by. And while she spins around on that merry-go-round, going up and down, enjoying that ride, drifting with the music, drifting into the experience, almost becoming one with the experience, she finds that there's something different this time. But while she's thinking about how no one wants to ride this ride anymore, her mind begins to wander and reality begins to change. And as she spins, so everything becomes blurry, a bit like spreading paint across a canvas and smudging that paint. And then a new reality begins to form. And she looks the other side and she can see that all the horses around her are becoming real. And as she looks around, she notices that it's about the middle of the day and she's trotting on a horse through woodland with other horses just following along and keeping up. And then she looks down and realises that this isn't just any old horse. She notices she's on the back of a pure white unicorn. And she can feel the warmth from the body of the unicorn. She can feel the softness of the side of its neck. And she strokes its hair, stroking its long mane, feeling that in her fingers. As they all ride, through the woodland and something about the experience just feels perfectly natural to her despite the fact that she was on a merry-go-round moments ago and she feels like this is the place to be like she's supposed to learn something from this experience And as that unicorn separates from the rest of those horses and travels deeper into the woods, so it slows down to a walk. And she can hear that thudding of its footsteps just gently on the mud, the occasional cracking of twigs. sounds of the rustling leaves overhead as the wind blows a breeze, the occasional dancing shards of light shining down from above on the path in front of her. And she doesn't know why she's on this journey, what she's supposed to experience. She's just aware that it feels as real as it did being on the pier. It doesn't feel like something being imagined. And after a while, that unicorn finds a clearing. The unicorn stops in the clearing, drinks from a stream. The girl dismounts and is surprised when the unicorn talks to her. 
and explains to her that perhaps she's the one destined to bring a bit of magic back into people's lives. That people have forgotten the magic in simple things. In finding enjoyment. And she didn't know how she was going to do this. And so the unicorn asked her to sit down by a tree and to close her eyes and said that if she's willing then they can join minds and the unicorn can take her on a journey a journey of discovery and she likes this idea thinks it sounds interesting she sits down under the tree closes her eyes and the unicorn tells her to just count along back from twenty to one. And then the minds will be connected and she'll be able to join them on that journey. And the unicorn begins to count backwards, and the girl begins to count backwards following that, from 20 to 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, connecting deeper and deeper with each other, 12, 11, Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and then the girl feels a sparkly lightheadedness, almost like there are stars twinkling around her, around the unicorn. And then this flash of rainbow light emanating out from that unicorn, encapsulating her. And even with her eyes closed, she can sense that light as it passes across her eyes, sensing the different colours. She can feel the warmth of that through her body. And then she notices her consciousness rising out of her body, travelling over and joining that unicorn. And she settles into that unicorn. She couldn't describe how she settles into the unicorn, but her consciousness settles in. Like going and settling into a comfortable place, to somewhere that feels so peaceful and calming to be. Somewhere that on first arrival, you just think this is a nice place to visit. And the unicorn checks that she's okay. And the unicorn can do that telepathically. The unicorn just thinks it. And because they're connected, she thinks back that she is okay and they can just communicate in that way. And then the unicorn closes its eyes, nods its head ever so slightly while focusing on a destination. And then in a flash of rainbow light, the unicorn vanishes. And then as the unicorn opens its eyes, so it's walking 
through dense forest. And the girl has no idea where this is. It's nothing like the woodland they've come from. And the unicorn says that they're off to meet an old friend. They're off to meet the green fairy. And the girl had always loved the idea of fairies. So she was really excited to be able to meet a green fairy. She'd drawn green fairies before in her school books and when doodling at home. But she never thought she'd actually ever meet one. And the unicorn walked through that forest. The sounds of the forest around them. Sounds of monkeys off in the distance. Sounds of birds the girl had never heard before. And then that unicorn found a clearing and started walking out into that clearing. And the girl was curious where this fairy would be and why this fairy would be here. And that unicorn started walking over towards a small lake. Then started walking along the edge of that lake where the mud was slightly squelchy. And had a drink in the heat of this day. And then continued walking towards a herd of elephants and said the green fairy's just over there and the girl was looking trying to find out where trying to catch a glimpse of this green fairy and as the unicorn neared those elephants The girl could feel the vibrations through the ground as the elephants stomped around. She was surprised at how large these elephants were, so much larger than the unicorn. And then something surprised her even more. One of the elephants seemed to just so lightly jump up into the air and fly. And then it landed down near the unicorn. So gracefully it barely made a sound. And the unicorn said hello to the green fairy. And the girl was confused. And then the girl noticed the tiniest wings on the back of that elephant. And the wings shimmered in the sunlight. And had multiple different colours to them, greens, purples, as they moved. And the girl was deeply confused. And the unicorn explained that the elephant's name is Green and the elephant is a fairy. And asked, were you expecting something different? And the girl said that they were expecting probably a tiny woman in a dress with wings. And the unicorn found this amusing. That this girl had obtained this rigid thinking. 
this one way of looking at the world, that things are as you expect. And the unicorn explained that fairies come in many different shapes and sizes. Some are male, some are female. Some look human. Some look like elephants. Some look like cats. Fairies just look different. They're not all just one thing. And the unicorn asked the green fairy to help them to find something. And the girl didn't know what. The girl didn't know what was going to be found. But the unicorn explained that they used to actually have two horns, not one. And they used to also have wings. And that they've still maintained their ability to transcend space and time. But if they can find their horn, the missing horn, then they can help that girl to understand something, to learn and have something to take back to be able to spread magic through the normal world. And the girl wondered whether a unicorn would be called a unicorn if it had two horns, or whether its name changed at some point. And the fairy used its trunk to hand over a tiny glass bottle with some bright blue liquid and a tiny cork in the top and said to the unicorn, if you take that you'll be guided to your horn. And the unicorn, carefully with its lips, popped off the cork, drunk the blue liquid. And then after a few moments, could see some sparkling in front of it. And that sparkling worked from in front of it, off, way off into the future, way off into the distance. Travelling through space and time, creating a path to follow. And this path would be followed through different lands and different times to find that horn. And the unicorn explained that they won't be able to find it as themselves for the whole journey. Because different parts of the journey require different skills. And that all they can do is now follow that path. And the unicorn thanked the green fairy. The green fairy went and joined the rest of the elephants. And that unicorn then closed its eyes, moved its head, and then travelled through space and time in a flash of rainbow colours, finding themselves 
in the middle of a desert. And that unicorn walked through the desert, still following that sparkling, twinkling path. heading towards a man who was sat by some ruins. And the man seemed to be resting, dozing, and trying to keep out of the sun overhead. And the unicorn quietly walked over and said to the girl, we're going to have to become him next. And so the unicorn rested down by that man, and then matched the breathing of that man, and then started counting back from twenty 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, and as the unicorn counted back, so the consciousness of themselves and the girl began to move into that man, five, four, three, two, one, and their consciousness was inside that man's head, and the man was unaware of this, they're essentially just hitching a ride, the unicorn explained that they'll just give an idea, but this man hunts for lost artefacts. And they've obviously just been here in the desert at this ruins to find something. And so the unicorn said that they'll plant the idea for their horn being a lost artefact to be found. And the man awoke, climbed on his motorbike, and just had this compelling feeling to travel out of the desert, and to travel towards some mountains, and they had quite a long journey to make. And they enjoyed speeding over the sand dunes, skidding down dunes, finding their way back to the road, speeding along with the wind in their hair, the feeling of being on that motorbike, taking turns, and feeling that it's a vehicle to have a close connection with the world around you. Almost like they could feel part of the world around them through the tires touching the ground. And the mountains were so far away. This man had to stop halfway there. as night started to fall. And they popped up a tent and a campfire. They made themselves some food. They could smell that food. They could notice their mouth watering from the smell of that food. And he ate the food as the sun set, and the stars shone in the sky, 
and they gazed up at those stars, looking at all the different constellations, curious about how each one got its name, and curious about the times that each one got their name. and how much or how little they've changed in those times. And then they rested back in their tents, and just listening to the gentle sounds around them. They drifted and floated comfortably asleep, and they slept well all night. And while they drifted and floated asleep, so the girl and the unicorn drifted and floated asleep. Almost like their consciousness was connected in a way that meant there was no need to be conscious while the person was sleeping. So they joined them in that sleep. And they joined them in waking up the next day. And the man had something to eat before packing away his tent. And getting back on his motorbike. And continuing his journey. And after a while he entered a small town filled up his motorbike to make the rest of that journey and then headed up towards the mountains and as he approached the foot of the mountains so he noticed the task at hand he noticed that there wasn't really much of a road and he would barely call it a track. But he enjoyed adventures, he enjoyed the thrill of riding a motorbike off-road like this. So he revved that motorbike, got it moving. The back wheel spun. And he shot off up that mountain. And as he went higher and higher up the mountain, so the weather got colder and colder. And then after some time, he noticed that there was snow forming. There was ice. And he realized he was going to have to make the rest of this journey on foot. And so he parked up his motorbike and continued this journey on foot. And the girl was glad that she wasn't having to do this, that she was just an observer. And the unicorn acknowledged that they're glad as well they wouldn't want to get their hooves up here. And for some parts of the climb, the man had to almost rock climb, had to pull himself up, get up over some large rocks. But he continued that climb. And while he climbed, so he began to notice high up there, near the top of the mountain, was what looked like some ruins of a building, perhaps ruins of a temple. And he continued to climb that mountain towards that temple. And to help him climb, he just focused on his breathing, 
focused on controlling his breathing. And he used his breathing as a way of keeping his attention on task. And as he neared the summit and neared that temple, so he noticed a kite. He could see the string going down towards the temple and the kite flying in the sky. And the kite had a symbol on it. And as he got nearer, so he noticed what looked like a monk sat on a wall that was partially overhanging the edge of the mountain with his legs crossed looking very underdressed for the weather and yet seeming so peaceful and calm just gently holding the string of that kite. And he didn't know whether to go and talk to that person, but he was curious about what they were doing. And he went over and he got their attention and he asked them what they were doing and who they were. And they explained that they're being in the moment. And they're being responsive to the moment. They're responding with the tiniest of movements. To keep that kite in the air. While they're letting the rest of their body deeply relax. And they're controlling the temperature of their body. They're focusing on being warm and comfortable. And they're not allowing themselves to be distracted by anything external. Until this man had arrived. And they thought that was important enough, an unusual enough an event, to take a few moments to talk with them. And this monk explained that they're the guardian of this temple. That people are allowed to come here, but they just watch over them. And this person, the man explained that they came here for something that there's a treasure here to be found. And the monk said that you're not here alone. The owner of the treasure has come along to find it. And they're going to have to go through some tests before they can have it. And the man looked around and couldn't see anyone else. And didn't realise that this monk was talking to the unicorn and the girl. And the monk said, did you want to take a healing bath? You look exhausted from your travels. And the man expected the worst and thought it would probably be an ice bath somewhere up here. But the monk pointed them in the direction of what looked like the warmest, most comfortable water. And they went over to that outside bath that was just outside the entrance to the temple. And they climbed into that water. And as they climbed in, so the water started glowing bright blue. They started feeling warm and fuzzy inside. 
feeling so comfortable. And they could feel that healing passing through them. As that warmth passed through them, they could feel their aching muscles relaxing. They could feel the aching passing. They could feel their muscles softening, their shoulders relaxing, their neck muscles relaxing, their breathing calming and relaxing. The muscles around their eyes, their face relaxing, down their arms relaxing, the muscles through their back relaxing. And the muscles through their stomach, their legs, down to their feet, all relaxing and healing. And they relaxed back, rested their head on the side, closed their eyes, and found that their airways felt so clear, breathing in the steam from this bath. Just enjoying that relaxing in that bath. And they quite liked that difference between the cold air on their face and the warmth of the water. And after a while they got out of that bath quickly dried themselves off, got dressed. And then the monk said they could head into the temple. And they pushed open the large wooden door and walked into the echoey temple, hearing their footsteps echo and reverberate around the walls. And the unicorn could notice that that glowing, floating light, that sparkling light, was stronger here. And they knew they were close to finding what they've came for. And then the monk explained, while looking at that man, but talking through that man, that you're going to have to do some challenges first. And the man said they didn't understand what challenges. And the monk said, not you. But you, you have to do those challenges. And the man was confused. And the monk explained to the man to go and sit down in a chair, to close their eyes. And they sat down in the chair, closed their eyes. And the monk said, just focus on the sound of the bell. And then that monk tapped a bell. And that bell reverberated and rang with a deep reverberation that seemed to pass through the body of that man. And as that man focused on that reverberating bell, he almost felt like he could see the sound waves, just as he could feel those sound waves. And he almost felt like he was riding those sound waves deeper into an experience. And the monk wanted that man to follow those sound waves deep into an experience. So that the unicorn could do what they need to do. And as that man relaxed deeper and further away from that conscious part of their mind. So the unicorn was able to communicate freely with the monk. 
and despite being magic. The unicorn was still surprised that this monk seemed to know they were there, that this monk seemed to be able to communicate with them, because the monk didn't seem like they were from a magic realm. They didn't seem to be magic like the unicorn, like the fairy. And they explained that they stand between worlds, that they're able to communicate with beings from multiple realms, and can communicate with any of those beings here, in whatever form they take. That they've raised their consciousness up enough to be able to connect on multiple levels like that, and to see more to reality than people realise is there. And so the unicorn wonders what their task is. And they're told that all they have to do is enter a room and then follow their nose. And so as a consciousness, looking just like some floating light, the unicorn drifts out that man's body, out of their mind, and floats into another room. And as this floating light in this other room, they notice that the room has diamonds all around the walls, and that light is shining in to this room, and reflecting off all those diamonds, creating an almost lattice work, rainbow pattern throughout the room. And the unicorns told that they have to follow the rainbow, and so they start to absorb themselves into that light and they start to follow that rainbow around the room, from one diamond to another. And as they do that, so the room turns dark, with just rainbow lights, no walls, nothing solid. And then they discover themselves, almost as if they're in space, flying among the constellations, flying from one star to another, and they have to find their constellation. And they know what constellation that is. And so they just have to explore space. And in their mind, they're trying to work out what it looks like from Earth. Because in space, it's all in 3D. And that out here, when you don't have the same perspective, the constellations look different. And so they realize they have to find Earth to find the constellation. And so they follow rainbow light, searching for the right star. And there are so many stars to search. They begin to feel a sense of frustration. And they know it's unusual for them to feel a sense of frustration. But they also know that that's part of this challenge, that they wouldn't have to undergo a challenge if it was easy. And they've seen the night sky so often from Earth. 
They try and work out which stars they know are nearer to Earth, and try and triangulate and figure out a way to the planet. And after some time, they eventually find their way they notice that it isn't so much about what you can see, but what you can hear. And they can hear which star is the one to head towards. But they can only hear that when they get nearer to that star. And as a consciousness, they head in to the solar system. They pass Pluto, Neptune, Uranus. And they head in, eventually passing Saturn, Jupiter. And then seeing the most beautiful dot in the sky, just a pale blue dot hanging there in the blackness of space, and they head towards that pale blue dot, and then as a consciousness they turn and look up, and can see their constellation. And they fly themselves up in line with that constellation from that perspective. And then find themselves back in that room. And then the monk enters. And says this man can now take. What's in that chest. And the unicorn travels back to that man, re-enters that man psychically, and the man awakens, feeling so calm and comfortable, like they've had the most pleasant sleep. And the monk shows them into the room, and says, is this what you were looking for. And the man opens the chest and sees a glowing horn inside that chest. And the man picks that up and can feel it almost pulsating energy in their hand. They put it into their backpack. They thank the monk for letting them take it. And the monk explains that they've been looking after it for thousands of years. Until the right person came along. And the man then travels back down that mountain, down to their motorbike. And heads back off on their motorbike. And partway along their journey. They pull over at a town. They decide to sleep in a comfortable bed. And so they go to the bed. They relax in the bed and they drift off asleep. But as they drift off asleep, so the consciousness of the unicorn and the girl Leave that man. The unicorn goes over to the horn. And the horn seems to disappear and sparkle out of existence. As it merges with that consciousness of the unicorn. And then the unicorn and the girl. find their way back to the unicorn's body. 
and as they absorb back into the unicorn's body. The unicorn sparkles and shines and shimmers. Light emanates brightly from all over the body of that unicorn. As a second smaller horn appears on the unicorn's head. And the most beautiful wings emerge from the side of the unicorn's body near the top of its back. And the girl has a sense of this happening, but from inside the unicorn can't see it. And the unicorn explains that they're back looking how they used to look before they had their second horn removed. And the girl wants to see So the unicorn closes its eyes, lowers its head, moves its head, and in a flash of light, the unicorn finds its way back to that woodland, to where that girl is resting under that tree. And her consciousness goes over and back into herself there. And she opens her eyes. And she can see that unicorn. Standing there looking so tall and graceful. With the most beautiful wings. The most pure white. Almost glowing look to them. And the unicorn explains that they're Pegasus. And that now they're back as they're meant to be. And the girl climbs onto the back of Pegasus. As Pegasus rides up into the air. And she can hear the flapping of Pegasus' wings. She can look down on the woodland, on a stream, down to a small lake. And Pegasus swoops around, lands back down so gently, so perfectly. and trots back into that woodland, and trots back through the woods. And the girl notices that even when Pegasus goes through muddy areas, the mud just doesn't stick. Pegasus just remains so pure and white. And then Pegasus exits the woodland and finds those other horses. And they all begin to trot back the direction they came. And as they trot back in the direction they came, so the girl begins Hear the fun fair music. Feel the metal pole she's holding. And almost like a painting. Being smudged. The experience begins to fade away and smudge away. And she begins to see that fair ground, seeing the flashing lights, people on other rides, playing at the different games, and then that merry-go-round comes to a halt. 
she climbs off of it and heads around and the operator says you seem to have almost zoned out a bit there are you okay and she says that she's fine and she walks away from that ride a little bit lost in thought curious about the experience wondering what had just happened. And then she leaves that fairground, leaves the pier, begins to head home. And as she heads home, so she puts her hand into her pocket and is surprised to find that there's something in there. And then she takes her hand out of her pocket, taking out that item. She notices that it's an origami unicorn. And written on the side of that origami unicorn are the words spread a little magic. And then on the other side is just the name Pegasus. And she holds that tightly in her hand. She feels some tears in her eyes. Of happiness. Of that connection. With that experience. With whatever has just happened to her. And she knows that she's going to go through life. Trying to spread a little happiness. Trying to spread some magic. And bring some joy to people. And when she gets home, her parents ask how the fair is. And she says it's okay and heads up to bed. She gets into bed and begins to drift and flow to sleep. And as she drifts and floats asleep, so she begins to dream about the experience. She has this sense of riding on Pegasus, on flying over the roofs. On sprinkling a rainbow of magic, a rainbow of light, across her hometown. And then expanding that out. And she starts to think how she can begin to spread some magic to those around you. And she drifts and floats so comfortably and relaxed. Asleep, knowing she's going to sleep so well. And wake, feeling so refreshed in the morning. And she drifts and falls asleep.